So let's look at some observations from a uniaxial tensile test. So we have our specimen. We're going to pull on it, and it's just going to have one component of stress. Okay. And let's further make the assumption, and this is just for observation, we're going to build complexity as we go, that the response is what we call perfectly plastic. Okay. So this is called perfectly plastic. So the material loads up to some yield value Y. And beyond that, it never increases. The stress never increases. So if I continue to strain it on and on and on, the value of stress will remain Y. Okay. So this is an assumption, an idealization that we call perfectly plastic. And it's not a bad, uh, it's not an awful uh, assumption for some metals, like, like say, annealed copper uh, behaves much, much like this. It, it'll have a very, very flat region after it yields for some time. And th there are other metals, too. All right. So if we write down the stress tensor for uniaxial stress, right, it's just really simple. It's that guy. Oh, I wanted to, I actually wanted to, let me, let me pause here for a second. I wanted to pose a question to you guys. So say, you know, kind of keeping this idealization of perfect plasticity in mind, say that I measure, you know, so ex ignore the uniaxial stress for a second. Say I'm actually somehow I measure a state of stress that has sigma 1, 1 equal to, uh, 10 megapascal, sigma 2, 2 is equal to 20 megapascal. So now, you know, th this, I've actually got some material and I'm, you know, I'm deforming it arbitrarily such that I measure these guys. And I know from the uniaxial tension test that I performed that the yield value, this value right here, is 15 MPa. And so the question is, given this, is the material yielding? So if all I had measured was sigma 1, 1, we would say no, right? If, if all I had measured was sigma 2, 2, we would say yes. Because the material is yielding because the stress that I measure is higher than the yield value, right? So, in other words, uh, this isn't actually a good, a good diagram because it, it needs to be more general that you might have some response like this where this is why, okay? So I measure the stress, you know, this is why this is 15 MPa. The, sigma, the stress in the sigma 1, 1 I measure is 10, so it's somewhere down here. And if all I had to compare to, I would say, no, it's not yielding. But, but sigma 2, 2 is up here. It's 20, right? So I would say, yes, it is yielding. So what's the answer? Is it yielding? How many think it is? Raise your hand if you think it is yielding. And if you don't think it's yielding. Okay. Well, so what we're chasing here is the answer to that question or one answer to that question. Because we go to the lab, we do these uniaxial tension tests, but we know in real life, uh, stress states are much more complex than that. And so we need a theory 
that helps us determine what the material is doing when it's involved in a really complex stress state. Okay? Is it yielding and if it's not? Because if it's not yielding, we have a constitutive model. Generalized Hooke's law. Right? If it is yielding, we don't have one yet, but we'll we'll make one up, right? And we'll we'll come up with something. Okay? So that's just a little aside. Let's let's return to this uniaxial stress idealization. And you know, again, so if sigma one one is less than y, then we have this sigma one one equal eps, you know, E epsilon one one through Hooke's law. If so, sigma one one is equal to y, and I only say equal to y because it can't be greater according to our idealization, right? Then sigma one one is equal to y. So in this case, our constitutive law is just y, right? I mean, after yielding, the stress is y. The yield stress. All right? So let's see what we can do. Let's write down something we know. We know that the deviatoric stress is this guy, right? <clears throat> Some of you in your homework stated that that's zero because there's summation. That's not true. Uh, sigma kk is equal to sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3. Right? It's, it's not in general zero for a stress tensor. It's, an, it's zero for a deviatoric stress tensor because you're subtracting it out, right? But in general, it's not, okay? So I'm gonna write this down, sort of evaluated post yield, right? So we're, we're somewhere on the curve up here. Right. So that is y, zero, 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 minus y over three, y over three, y over three. So that's equal to, so our deviatoric stress tensor is equal to two thirds y, zero, zero, zero minus one third y, zero, zero, zero minus one third y. And so now we're gonna introduce a definition. The definition is going to be the equivalent stress. So we're defining this thing as 3J2. Which is also the square root of 3 half SIJ SIJ. Okay. And so here's SIJ. If we compute 3 half SIJ, SIJ, what we get is Y. Okay. So the reason we defined the equivalent stress to be 3J2 is because we want the equivalent stress to be equivalent to the yield, the stress that we measure in a uniaxial tensile stress, right? So when we made up this definition, we made it up very precisely, such that that's true, right? So we can have an arbitrary stress state, an arbitrary stress tensor, but in, in, the, in the case of a uniaxial tension test, the equivalent stress evaluates 
to a scalar y, that is the, str that is the stress that we'd measure in a uniaxial tension test. Okay? I defined it. I just made it up. Not me. I, I didn't make it up. But it, it, it's a definition. And we're going to use the definition, but it's, a, you know, it's just not, it's not arbitrary, right? I mean, it's, it's defined such that when you evaluate it for a uniaxial tension test, uniaxial stress, what it evaluates to is why. Okay? Because we, what we want to do is we want to apply this for arbitrary deformations where the stress tensor could be full, right? So right here we have a very simple stress state. There's just one component. But what we want to do is we want to apply this theory when the whole stress tensor could be populated, right? And so we developed this definition, but we developed it in such a way or we propose this definition, but we propose it in such a way that it sort of makes intuitive sense. When there's only one stress component, the equivalent stress evaluates to that, that value. 